For this section, we investigate rational functions. To get a rational function, what we'll do, we have r of x equal to p of x over q of x. p of x and q of x are just going to be polynomials. One restriction, I can't have that function in the denominator, the q of x, be exactly equal to the zero function. So q of x can have zeros, I just can't have it all zero. Now, goals of this section, okay, ultimately we want to get to graphing rational functions, but that's not going to be this course. Our first steps in the rational functions are going to be like we would have for rational numbers. So we have issues there that translate to here. Things like how do we multiply, divide, add, subtract. We're dealing with functions. We have to worry about domains. That's plenty for a section for this course. Now, let's start with, okay, to motivate, well, we've got a function. Let's stick some values in it. Let's see what things can come out. So we'll start with f of x equal to x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x minus 2. Okay, and these are perfectly good polynomials. I'll evaluate at some points to see what happens. So if we put 0 in here, okay, remember, to evaluate, wherever I see an x, we're going to put a 0, and then PEMDAS is going to take over for the cleanup. So for f of 0, we'll get a minus 3. If I take, say, minus 1, we'll go with a negative just to remind you for bookkeeping. When I substitute negative numbers, I like to use the parentheses so we don't drop signs. So here, with a minus 1 going in, we're going to get a minus 4 out. Okay, and note, kind of a feature of this is you're going to have to deal with fractions if you plug enough points in. Now, what makes things interesting, let's try f of 2. So if I put in f of 2, we're going to wind up getting a 0 over 0. 0 over 0 I can't work with. Okay, Whenever we divide by 0, there's going to be problems. Let's talk about the cases. If I have 0 over 0, the proper language for this is indeterminate, meaning if I want this to be a number, well, I'm not going to be able to pin it down to a number if we just work off of the definition. For instance, if I said that 0 over 0 was equal to x, where x is a real number, okay, I'm going to put it in fraction form as x over 1. And then, say, if we cross multiply, I'm going to wind up getting 0x equal to 0, 1, or 0 equal to 0. So you'll note, no matter what x you put in here, that's going to be a candidate for 0 over 0. So we call it indeterminate because we can't pin it down. On the other hand, if I take any non-zero number over 0, say 1 over 0, we'll call this undefined. And again, I can proceed the same way. If I say that 1 over 0 is equal to a fixed real number x, then I'll take x over 1 equal to 1 over 0, say cross multiply. I have 0 times x equal to 1 times 1. That gives me 0 equal to 1, which is false. And you'll note it will be false no matter what we choose for the x. So if I try to write 1 over 0 as a real number, there's no candidates that are going to work. So I would have to call that undefined. Something to be careful with. 0 over 1 is equal to 0. So this is not a problem. If we proceed as before, I'll set 0 over 1 equal to x, put it as x over 1, cross multiply, I get x equal to 0, a perfectly good number. So this makes sense. Now, if I'm given a rational function, the first thing I'd want to know about it would be its domain. Okay, that would be just the set of numbers I could put in there without getting garbage. So a template for finding the domain, if I have anything over box, this will be defined when box is not equal to zero. So we just take the denominator, set it not equal to zero, and solve. Or set it equal to zero and throw that stuff away. If we take our example, so I have f of x equal to x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x minus 2. I don't worry about the numerator. I just take the x minus 2, set it not equal to zero, and solve. So we'll get for the domain all real numbers but 2. 
what happens at two? Well, we just saw if I put two in here, we get zero over zero. That's not gonna to correspond to any real number, so not in the domain. For any other real number, well, you could push that through a calculator and you're gonna get something sensible. Another example, okay, let's try, we'll flip it over. G of x equal to x minus two over x squared minus five x plus six. Again, I don't worry about the x minus two. We just take the denominator, set it not equal to zero. Here, x squared minus five x plus six, that we know how to factor. We'll get x minus two times x minus three not equal to zero. And then we know that the only way I can multiply these two together to get zero is if x is a two or a three. So we'll throw those away. So we get all real numbers but two or three. Now, in both of our examples, you may note, okay, well, with the factoring, you see we could cancel out the x minus twos. We don't want to do that before we find our domain. Okay, let's take a look at a simple example to see what goes wrong. For instance, if I take f of x equal to x minus one over x minus one, well, you could just cancel. You have f of x equal to one or y equals one. That's just a horizontal line at height one. So you get a picture that looks like this. Note, for this function, we're defined at one. Now, if I take a look at f of x defined as follows, well, we'll note the domain, I gotta throw away x equal to one, okay, because we divide by zero. So the true graph of f of x is, when you cancel, you'll still get the y equals one, but we don't have x equal to one in the domain, so we're gonna have to put a hole in the graph. And then you'll note these are two very different functions. They're almost the same, but they don't have the same domains, so different. So that's all we'll do with rational functions for now. What we're more interested in going forward is trying to work with rational expressions. So the px over qx, there are gonna be analogs between those and the rational numbers. Okay, so how do we do the arithmetic? Where we'll start is with simplification. So note, given a rational number, there are gonna be many ways to write that number. There's gonna be a preferred form, which we call the reduced form, for instance, if I have four over six, well, we could still cancel in that, and that's gonna leave me with a two thirds. Two thirds doesn't reduce any further, so that's preferred. Same idea with rational expressions. So the idea is gonna be, if we can factor, first off, if there are any factors in common, we wanna cancel them out, and then their reduced expression for the rational expression will be what's left over if we can't cancel any further. For instance, if I have x squared minus 16 over x minus four, okay, the numerator, that's a difference of two squares, that factors as x plus four, x minus four. The x minus four is cancel, leaving us with an x plus four. Okay, note, that's the same rational expression. If we're talking rational function, we have to worry about how we just change the domain, but not an issue for here. Now, trick that's useful sometimes, we really don't need to pull this out for most of the things we need to do, but how do you know when you've actually canceled as far as you can? Well, the idea is, is you just start factor and cancel. If you can ever put numbers into the expression that you're at that give you a zero over zero, that means you can do more work. And then you start factoring and canceling some more. Not often do we need to use this trick, but once in a while it's very helpful. Let's look at more examples. So let's try x squared plus five x plus six over two x squared plus three x minus two. Factor the numerator and denominator. I get x plus two, x plus three over two x minus one, x plus two. We note the x plus twos cancel, leaving me with an x plus three over two x minus one. Now note for the trick, there's not a lot to worry about here, that things factor cleanly, but in the original expression, if I was worried about whether this is gonna have any cancellation or not, is it reduced? If I were to stick, say, minus two in here, and I'll let you check that, you get the zero over zero, meaning there are things that can cancel out. 
So um, when I get to here, you'll note the only way I could try to get a zero over zero would be if we put in a minus three or a one half, and that's not gonna be a problem. So that's gonna be our reduced expression. Note, rational expressions, we can have several variables. So for instance, I could look at something like this, 4x squared plus 4xy minus 8y squared over 2x squared y minus 2y cubed. Of course, with the factoring, we look for greatest common factors in the numerator and denominator. So there we can pull out a 4 and a 2y. And then with what's left over, those will factor nicely. So in the numerator, we'll have an x minus y, x plus 2y. In the denominator, we'll have an x plus y, x minus y, where we see the difference of two squares. So the x minus y's are going to cancel, and we're left with 2x plus 2y over y, x plus y. And there's nothing to cancel there, so that's going to be our reduced expression. Now, if we want to do arithmetic with rational expressions, the easiest place to start is multiplication, just as with rational numbers. Rule for multiplication, so we have A over B times C over D. Numerators go together, denominators go together to get AC over BD. Now, is it worth even mentioning this? Well, yes, let's take a look at an example if I had the expression x squared minus 1 times x plus 2 over x plus 1, common error is to slip things into the denominator where they don't belong. The rule gives us guidance. It says we should be multiplying two fractions together. So I could put x squared minus 1 over a 1, and now it's clear what I should be doing. So what we'll do, okay, numerators go together. So the x squared minus 1 goes with x plus 2. I can factor this for x plus 1, x minus 1, difference 2 squares. Then we'll see the x plus 1's go away. Because the denominator completely cancels out, I'll put a 1 there for bookkeeping purposes. And because what's left over is reasonable, I could just throw that away. And we wind up with an x minus 1, x plus 2. More typical, we'll have two fractions being multiplied together. So for instance, if I have x minus 5, x plus 7 as a fraction, we multiply by x squared plus 6, x minus 7 over x squared minus 25. We could put everything with a single bar. I didn't do that here, but the bookkeeping is pretty clear. So if we just factor, okay, we get x plus 7, x minus 1 over difference 2 squares, x plus 5, x minus 5. The x minus 5's cancel, the x plus 7's cancel, leaving us with x minus 1 over x plus 5. Now, important note when working with rational expressions, not really a thing with rational numbers, if we have a minus b over b minus a, so the same terms, but they're in a different order, then we could just cancel them out to get a minus 1 couple ways you could think about this, but the way I think of it is if you multiply minus 1 times b minus a, then that's going to give you minus b plus a or a minus b. So that accounts for why they're in the wrong order. Then the b minus a will cancel, giving you your minus 1. So let's look at an example of this. If we have 4 minus 5x over 2x squared plus 2x, times x squared minus x minus 2 over 25x squared minus 16. A lot of things going on here. Let's take a look. The x squared minus x minus 2 factors as an x plus 1, x minus 2. The 2x squared plus 2x, that has a greatest common factor of a 2x. That'll leave an x plus 1. That's good because they'll cancel. Then we have a difference of two squares. 25x squared minus 16, that goes to 5x minus 4. 5x plus 4, we note we have our 4 minus 5x over 5x minus 4. I could use this rule to just turn that into a minus 1. So these terms cancel, but I collect a minus sign on the other side. Then what's going to be left over, the x plus 1s go. So in the numerator, we have an x minus 2. Denominator, we have the 2x and the 5x plus 4. That's as far as that's going to go.
Next operation, we have division, which will be the last operation for this part. What do we do? If I have A over B divided by C over D, we're just going to flip the second one over and multiply. So this is going to be A over B times D over C. Where does this come from? So this works perfectly fine for rational numbers. Note, if I take A over B over, okay, big bar, C over D, to simplify this, I got to clear out the denominators. So the small denominators, the inside denominators. So I'm going to multiply by BD over 1 over itself. That lines everything up nicely. We'll get AD over 1 over BC over 1, and those collapse down to AD over BC, as promised. Now, for an example, let's try x squared plus x minus 20 over 3x. We divide by x squared minus 16 over 2x squared minus 2x. We flip the second one, then we multiply. So there's a lot of factoring to do here. x squared plus x minus 20 is an x plus 5x minus 4. 2x squared minus 2x, we can factor out a 2x, leaving us with an x minus 1. x squared minus 16 is a difference of 2 squares, so x plus 4, x minus 4. The x minus 4s go away, the x's go away, leaving us with 2 thirds, x minus 1, x plus 5 over x plus 4 then that's as far as that's going to go. Finally, let's do an example where only one of them is a genuine fraction. For instance, we could do x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. Now, if you just say this out, okay, divided by x plus 1, okay, that just means put x plus 1 in the denominator. So this one could be straightforward if we wanted, but let's go through the motions. So the idea is this has got to be a fraction, so I'm going to put it over a 1. And then to turn this into multiplication, we're just going to flip it over. So we're taking x plus 1, x plus 1 over x minus 1 times 1 over x plus 1. Pair of x plus 1's cancel, leaving us with x plus 1, x minus 1.